So what have we learned so far? We are learning the book of Zechariah. We have taken an introduction to the book. Yeah, so very quickly, can you tell what we had seen? The first four visions. Okay, what were the four visions? Because today so is a continuation of that. Man among the myrtle trees. Yeah, man amongst the myrtle trees. What did it represent? What did it represent? You have to remember what each vision means because from that and the continuous eight visions, no, you will get a clear idea of what God was trying to communicate. <clears throat> and there are practical applications for us also from each of those. Yeah, the Lord remembered, the Lord came, okay, the Lord blesses and uh, he was, he had come to help in the reconstruction, okay, so we understand from that, that God is active in our midst, okay, he is there. We cannot work independently of Him. One of the key things you have to understand is that there are no plans that you can do at the exclusion of God. Okay, He is there to run things. Whatever we do as opposed to what He wants will only bring grief and will not bring any success. Okay, so whether it is a business adventure, whether, whether it is a job, whether it is a course that you are pursuing, whether it is marriage, whether it is buying of a house, whether it is uh, just about anything in the world, okay? First, who must be there? It is the Lord who must be there, okay? If He is in it and you are in it with Him, then there is going to be progress, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, it is not going to be fruitful. What was the second vision? Four horns. Hmm? Four, horns. four horns. What did it indicate? They scattered the people of uh, four kingdoms which oppressed the Jewish nation and scattered or dispersed them. Okay. And God, <coughs> in his divine purpose and plan, had made craftsmen who will destroy each of those horns. Okay. So they could rule and reign only as long as God allowed it. Okay. And the agent that God will use to finish the enemy has been decided by him. Okay. We cannot work it out from our planning or devices. Okay. If God has appointed certain ruler to rule our nation for a period of time, you know, there is nothing that anyone can do to displace it except through the craftsman whom God has appointed. We can pray, we can plead with God, but it is God who determines who will end those rulers. Okay. And when he ends it, it is curtain for that ruler, okay, or nation or kingdom which is opposed to God, okay. So we need not worry about how to, uh, uh, you know, be successful in these matters. God will himself initiate those things. Third, man with a measuring line. So what did it indicate? Hmm? Be Loudly. The city of uh, Jerusalem will be restored. Okay, city of Jerusalem will be rebuilt. There will be no uh, walls. You know, it will expand. It will thrive. It will flourish. Okay, there will be prosperity in that place. Then we also saw a little bit of Jerusalem from the perspective of God. 
right up to its end. Okay, its destruction, its enemies, and uh, uh, the people who are against it, and finally, in God's plan, how it will be elevated to become the central city in which He Himself will be ruling during the millennium. Okay, fourth vision. Clean garments for the high priest. Clean garments for the high priest. Okay. Who gave the clean garments? Angel of God. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. He is the only one who mediates between God and man as far as sin is concerned. Okay. That is the biblical message. Okay. Only he has. There are many gods and goddesses whom the world believes in or even famous people. But none of them can save us from that filthy garment that we are wearing, which represents sin in our lives. Okay. Only God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, removes it. Okay. And it is Jesus who gave the clean garments. Okay. There was a substitution. He died for our sins. Okay. He, his righteousness was transferred to us. Our sin was transferred to him and his righteousness was transferred to us. It is a very clear message. He gives us his garment of righteousness. And we also saw Zechariah restored his honor and dignity. Okay, so as believers, we must not recall and uh, look down on other believers because of their past. Okay, but we have to restore them, see them as God saw it. Okay, that is why even when uh, Philemon, in the book of Philemon, whom do you see? Onesimus, who was a thief, uh, he stole something, ran away from Onesimus, uh, from uh, Philemon. But uh, Paul asked him to be restored as, as a, as what? Huh? As a brother in Christ. Okay. Not as a slave, not as a thing. So in the Bible, you will not find any preaching against slavery. But slavery collapsed across the world. Okay. It is only because people started obeying God's word. They did not treat their uh, servants who came to know the Lord, slaves who came to know the Lord as a slave anymore. And slowly throughout the uh, empire, the Roman empire, slavery collapsed. Okay. So what is the next vision? Okay. We will see that today. Someone can read loudly. Zechariah 4, 1 to 14. Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me, as the man who is wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? So I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great fountain? Before Zerubbabel, you, should, you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven Rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which stand to and fro throughout the whole earth. Then I answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and its, and its left? And I further answered and said to him, What are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of the two gold pipes from which the golden oil drains? Then he answered me and said, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. Okay. So, a question in logon ke man mein tha. You know, there was a question on their mind. 
हम लोग जो कमजोर है वीक दो सौ पास आर वीक यू नो हाउ कैन वी डू द वर्क ऑफ गॉड इन एनी वे ओके टूडे इवन लाइक यू नो आई आई नो अक्रॉस आर नेशन नो मेनी क्रिस्टियंस आर फीलिंग वेरी इनसेक्योर मेनी बिलीवर्स ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स ऑफ आर including many of us also in our hearts we will be fearful okay how can a weak and minority group accomplish such a task okay when the jews had come back from babylonian captivity they were few in number the local population was very big and if you read the other books ezra nehemiah ezra nehemiah ka pustak hum log padhenge to hame samajh mein aayega ki kaafi लोग उनके विरोध काम कर रहे थे ओके गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियल्स पीपल नेबर्स एवरीवन वाज वर्किंग अगेंस्ट देम सो इन दिस पैसेज वी फाइंड जेकराय वोकन अप उसको उठाया जाता है एक एंजल उसको उठाता है और उसको ये देखने के लिए बोलता है ओके लाइक वी हैड सीन इन ईच ऑफ दीज पैसेजेस देर विल बी अलू एंड अ सोल्यूशन ओके the answer that the lord gives or the key information that is given is not by might not by power but by my spirit okay so we as believers we may be small in number we may be minority we may not have that much of power and authority in our hand but the task that he has uh, given in our hands okay Uh, and the life that he wants us to live here on earth is not to be lived by what by our mind our intellect hai na hamare taakat ya buddhi ke hisab se humko jeena nahi hai okay god his spirit will give us the strength to go through the circumstances hame taakat parmeshwar se hi milega okay what are some of the things that are explained in this passage the temple which they were building ha huh? jo mandir hum log baandh raha tha it should not be built by strength wisdom or skill but entirely by the enabling of the holy spirit that is what verse 6 says okay zerubbabel jo shuru kiya wo cheez khatam bhi karega nawa vachan mein likha hai what zerubbabel starts he will finish it okay so many things in life we wonder no whether we will be able to finish it we had take up courses for study we are worried whether what we started to study we will be able to finish it some job that we take up in the office we are afraid whether uh, like you know our termination letter will be served the next day kal kya hoga we don't know you know i have also got this fear many times i have told sudha also at home that today i think i will lose my job and got to work okay but the lord promises that starting and ending uh, is in the hands of god and if we trust him trust god trust then he will give the holy spirit who will help us to complete it okay don't despise third lesson that we can learn is don't despise the day of small beginnings chota chote shuruaton ke liye uh what is said by what word will be used in some despise ke liye niche mat dekho niche mat dekho okay chote shuruaat ko niche mat dekho first hand padhiye hindi mein hindi mein padho kyunki kisne choti baaton ka te din tuch jana hai ha tuch 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 okay to small things many ventures that we start spiritual ventures that we start are very small okay share the gospel with someone in your class share the gospel with someone in your workplace you know hamare mann mein aisa lagta hai kabhi kabhi na kaisa kuch farak pad sakta hai is chote cheez se you know they worship idols they have problems in their home unka ghar mein parivar mein sab bahut sankat hai sankat hai aur wo ekdam कट्टर विश्वास रखते हैं उन लोग उनका जो भी मूर्ति पूजा है उसमें देव देवों में भी तो कैसा बदल हो सकता उनका जिंदगी बदल सकता है यू नो वी आर अफ्रेड वी डाउट एंड वी डोंट मेक दैट स्मॉल बिगिनिंग बट द लॉर्ड टेल्स ट्रस्ट इन एंड गेट स्टार्ट ओके डोंट ट्रस्ट योर स्ट्रेंथ डोंट ट्रस्ट योर इंटेलिजेंस 
you know the spirit of god will lead us and he will guide us and he will also help us to finish okay because he is the one who starts and finishes things okay the continuous oil that was flowing into the lamp shows that you know believer does not have only limited resources from god god gives you continuously that which is required for you to finish the task okay god is someone who gives us then the next vision chapter 5 verse 1 to 4 the relina can read it then i turned and raised my eyes and saw there are flying swords and he said to me what do you see so i answered i see a flying scrolls its length is 20 cubits and its width 10 cubits then he said to me this is the curse that goes over goes out over the face of the whole earth every thief shall be expelled according to what is on this side of the scroll and every forger shall, shall be expelled according to what is on that side of it i will send out the sword says the lord of hosts it shall enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name it shall remain in the midst of his house and consume it with its timber and stones okay so what is the vision that uh, zakaria saw can we describe it and break it up into pieces he saw a flying scroll then huh? 20 cubits by 10 10 cubits okay then that is actually 30 feet by 15 feet one and a half times a multiply kiya to cubit will change to feet which we can understand more easily then it is a curse which goes over the entire land then every thief shall be expelled then only riya ka bible mein hai kya what else is mentioned according to one side of the scroll then everyone that swears and everyone who swears shall be cut off shall also be cut off okay according to what is written on the other side then it will enter the house of the thief and the house of him who swears ah uh, it will enter the house of the thief and the one who swears then it will penetrate and destroy the entire house okay so one of the things that uh, we need to understand is the thought which is on every human mind you know what is the uh, thought which is on our mind we are not as bad as others we are not as bad as others kuch bura nahi hai itna bura to nahi hai hum log Okay, it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, so we don't uh, uh, think that we deserve to be punished. Hmm? Okay, the size thirty feet by fifteen feet is the size of the porch. that was outside the temple if you see 1 kings chapter 6 verse 3 it uh, it will tell you that when solomon built the temple the porch porch bolo to the outside veranda jaisa jo hai na with a roof and it had two pillars brass pillars which were holding up the uh, uh, the roof of the place that was about this size it was the place where the priest read the law of god to the people who are gathered outside common people could not enter inside okay so the law was read to them from there okay this scroll is open khulla hai okay nothing is hidden so people can read it okay it is big and it can be read okay and it is going over the whole land no one is exempted from the outcome okay there is something which is mentioned as a punishment and no one will be exempted that is what it says okay 
Romans 1, 19 to 20. Can someone read it from there, Raina? Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible quality, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. Okay. So people may have the feeling in their heart that they are good enough and may be spared. But what is the Bible telling? People are without excuse. Zechariah was given a vision in which he was shown that people of the entire land will be without excuse because they can read it. It is big and on two sides things are written which will be a problem for them. Okay. According to Romans, there is no human being who can give an excuse for himself. Even whether he is a tribal, whether he is uneducated, whether he is blind, or whether whatever may be the reason or cause, he is without excuse. Okay? People are universally aware of God and his requirements. Like that scroll was flying. Huh? Something about God's law was written, which was being proclaimed to the thief. And to the one, we'll have a look at that. And to the one who are falsely, falsely making promises. Okay. Uh, so, those, those uh, people will be able to be aware in their heart about their, uh, about God's requirements. Okay. Uh, the universal fear of death. Okay. People are aware across the globe about what God wants. And all of us are afraid of dying, you know, irrespective of which religion or belief we come from, because we know that we have failed. Okay, that knowledge is there, the fear of death that every individual has shows that he is not ready for God's judgment because the judgment or verdict cannot go in his favor. He knows it in his heart. Okay, what does this verse read, Rachel? Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sin. We be sure sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses even over those who did not sin by breaking a command. And oh. as yeah, you can as did Adam, Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. Okay. Bible kya bata da hai? Sin entered the world through one man. Adam sinned and as a result, all his children, right up to us, we are all sinners. Wages of sin is death. In the same way, death came to all people. We are sinners, so death came to us. Okay. But what Paul is trying to tell is important. What is he trying to tell? Sin was in the world. Is there a place here? Sin was in the world before the law was given. Law was given to who? To Moses. But sin was there. That is why even though there was no law, Paul is telling people were still dying because sin was there and death was being earned as a wage. Okay? Even Adam died because Adam did not have the mosaic law given to him. He was given a command by God not to eat of the fruit of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? The day you eat of it, you will die. He was given a command but he broke that. But he was not given the Mosaic law. So from Adam till the time the Mosaic law was given, people died because they sinned. Sin gets death as a wage. Okay? And we sin because we are sinners. That is the only thing which will come. Okay? That is what Paul is trying to say when he said, sin entered the world through one man. Once it has entered, it has become part of humanity. Now it produces. It results in Sin. Okay. Death is proof that the wages of sin is being earned by all people even when the law was not yet given. Okay. The law simply shows 
that man is not complying to God's requirements. Once the law was given through Moses and people read it, they can know very clearly that their sin is contrary to God's requirements. Okay. Now, Jonu. For just as through disobedience of the man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign to the righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, so what is Paul trying to tell? All of us became sinners through the disobedience of Adam. Okay, one man that is Adam. Okay, so, so the second Adam that is the Lord Jesus Christ, he did not inherit our sinful nature. He was conceived as a, he was virgin born. Okay, so he did not inherit our sinful nature. So his obedience to all the requirements of the law. He was sinless. Okay. So therefore, through his uh, obedience, many of us will be receiving the righteousness of God. Okay. So it is a simple thing. There is a transfer taking place. We are sinners. Our sin is transferred to the Lord Jesus Christ. His obedience results in his righteousness being transferred to us. Okay. Why was the law given through to Moses? The purpose is given, shown here. Okay, because the symbolism used is that of the porch of the temple from where the law was read to the people. The law was brought so that trespass might increase. Okay, sin is what we are doing because we are sinners. Okay, we commit sins, but trespass has to do with knowing. Okay, what is wrong and still doing it. Okay, there are many other passages in Romans where you will understand the relationship between how the law makes us trespass even more, how it triggers within us the desire to break it. Okay, even when we read it, because we are sinners inside. And Paul is telling that sin reigned in death. So, grace also will reign to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay. So, Paul is talking about the solution to man's sin. Law cannot bring salvation. So, keeping the law will not save you because you have already broken some. Okay. And in terms of breaking, breaking one law is like breaking every law. You become a lawbreaker even if you break one law. Okay. The curse is written on both sides so that everyone will be able to see whether you are on this side or on that side. Okay. There are two dimensions which are mentioned. Thief will be man banished and everyone who swears falsely will be banished. It is talking about the sins that we commit against other human beings and the sins that we commit directly against God. Okay. We are breaking law of this way or the other. Some who are very religious, they think that, you know, they are good because they are keeping things related to God, but they are not. Okay. In one way or the other, you are breaking the requirements of God against other human beings or against God. Okay. So the two sides of the scroll are representing our disobedience in actions against other humans and in actions against God. You got it? Galatians 3.10, who will read it uh, now? Yeah, Anushka. All who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Okay, what this verse means? You follow one law, but break another. Okay, it has no value. Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything. The clue is you have to do everything. Many people think they are good. Why? Because they are not breaking so many laws of God. That's what makes them feel that they are good. 
But Paul is writing that cursed is the man who breaks even one law. Okay, because you have broken the laws of God. Now, Isaiah 59, 1 to 2. Ashwin. Surely the arm of the Lord is not so short to prayer, not to bear to God to hear, but your iniquities have been separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Okay. Isaiah 59, 1 to 2 says, Arm of the Lord is not too short to save. Okay. No matter how bad a sinner you are, no matter how terrible your sins may be, he is able to save. So this is what we need to remember. But our iniquities have separated us from our God. Okay. He cannot, your Sins have hidden his face from you so that he cannot hear. Sin comes as a barrier between us and God. He cannot just overlook our sin. Okay. So he has to provide a solution. Okay. Now we ask the question, is anyone unsavable in the eyes of God? There are some verses which very often are misunderstood and creates a lot of confusion. In many of us, Romans 9 13. Can someone read it? Who will read it? As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Okay. What does this verse mean? Are some people hated by God? Some people whom God will not save. What do you think? Hmm? No. Let us take a look at the word that is used here. Okay. The Hebrew word that is used is sawni. Okay. In the original Hebrew, the word sawni is used. Okay. So we need to understand the word which in many of the versions has been translated as it. Okay. Old Hebrew is pictographic. Pictographic ka matlab malum hai? Pictures are used to depict words. You have seen Egyptian writings, snakes, birds, and many things are written. It is part of their alphabet. Okay. It is a pictographic language. Okay. Where words are communicated using pictures. Okay. Not alphabets, which are substitutes for those sounds, but using pictures. The old Hebrew. Okay, not the modern day Hebrew, but the old Hebrew was a pictographic script. It uses two symbols to describe this word. A thorn and a, a seed. Okay. These two pictures are used to describe the word sony. Okay. It would indicate a seed which has thorn. You know, when we were in school, we used to play with this. Many of you may not have seen. I'm sure brother must have seen this type of seeds. No, we used to throw on people's shirt, <laughs> which it will get stuck. It will poke inside. So teachers had a tough time catching the culprits, but almost all the kids did it. And when somebody is not seeing, they will throw it on them from the back, and it will cause a lot of pain. Okay, what must be got there alone? Okay. So, the teachers were also uh, very upset with this type of a thing. The word means thorn seed. Okay. Was indicating uh, the word thorn seed. Okay. Let me see why. Yeah. Some of the places it is not. Uh, Releasing sentence by sentence. 
Okay. Plants with palm seeds are used as fences. Why? Plants with thorns or palm seeds are used as fences because they keep away animals, they keep away robbers. Okay. They prevent people from coming inside. Okay. To the person who tries to cross that plant which has thorn seeds, what it will do? It causes hurt and pain. Okay. It describes the reaction to the thorn seed. Okay, the person hates that plant means he actually is trying to avoid pain that is being caused by that plant. Okay, which is keeping him away. This word meant being hurt and wounded by something. Okay, Genesis 26. 26 to 28 describes Isaac and the Philistines, Abimelech, Abuza, and Pichon. Okay, Sister DC can read that verse. Genesis 26, 26 to 28. Sajjan, Jagrana, no, don't sleep. I may tell anyone to read. And may ask questions to anyone also. Then Adamadis came to him from him and with the of his friends and told the commander of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why you have came to me since you hate me and have sent me away from you? But they said, We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we said, Let there, let there now be an oath between us, between you and us. And let's make a covenant with you. Okay. So, ये एक मुलाकात है आइजक का और फिलिस्टाइन्स का. Okay. Today also they are having fight you know, in that land. It has started long back. Before Isaac, Abraham also had a similar situation. Okay. Abraham called Sarah his sister. Okay. Here Isaac calls whose uh, wife of Rebecca, okay. First, Rebecca is sister, okay. What his daddy did, he is also doing, okay. And uh, then they find out, and uh, after some time, they ask Isaac to leave from that place, okay. They are upset because God was, what was God doing in Isaac's life? Prospering him. Okay, he was becoming, same thing was happening with Abraham also. They were becoming prosperous. Okay, so here because Isaac was becoming prosperous, the Philistines were upset about them and they asked them to, Isaac and his family to leave. If you read, we are not going to read the whole passage now, but they actually fill the wells which Abraham had done so that Isaac will not have wells to feed his flock. Okay, water his flock. Or anything that he wants to grow, he will not be able to grow. So they started closing the wells and driving them away from there. Okay. But the Lord continues to prosper. So you can read that chapter. It is very interesting. Okay, then one day Abimelech comes and uh, along with his uh, Ahuza is his advisor and Fikol is his army chief. Okay, they come together and they tell Isaac, let's make a treaty. Okay, again you can see that no? <laughs> the Philistines were majority. Here there is only one family which is representing God, a minority. Same context as we were looking at today. Okay, but the majority or the more powerful people are coming to make a agreement or treaty of peace with them because what they could see they could see the hand of god at work in the life of either very clearly okay so they wanted to have peace the same team had also visited his father abraham and made a peace treaty now because they expelled him now they want him to Sign a peace 
them also. And what is Isaac telling in verse 27? Isaac asked them, why some versions will put it as, since you hate me and say, hated me and sent me away. The same word is used. Okay. The same word, Sony is used here. Okay. So what is Isaac telling, trying to communicate? I became like a thorn seed to you all. You all wanted to avoid me. That is why you sent me away. Now what are you coming here to make a peace treaty with me? Okay. The very sight of me made you upset and you went away from me. Okay. The sight of his prosperity was the source of constant pain for them. Okay, so Isaac is now asking, why you want me to come? Okay. Jacob and Leah. Remember what sentence was uttered? Genesis 29, 31. Now who will read it? Victoria. Twenty nine thirty one. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened his open to him, but they took it to work barren. Okay, read it again loudly because you had something in your throat. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was there. Okay, when the Lord saw that Leah was, was hated. <laughs> Okay. Now, many of the newer translations will put unloved. Okay. Because just like the word love does not communicate God's love. So, the Christians used another word, no? agape. Okay. That is love without limit. Love which is not dependent on what we are. Because word loves, when the person can do something for you, we love, we like. Okay, we use the word love in that sense. So the Bible used a higher word agape to describe it. Here also the word hate is not describing what reaction was there. Do you think Jacob beat Leah? He stopped talking to her. What does it mean when it says Jacob hated Leah? Yeah. Hmm? Uh, Rachel. Rachel. Okay. Rachel ko jada priority diya. Kyo? Huh? She was beautiful. <coughs> so, why does the Bible say Jacob or uh, Leah was unloved or hated? Laban uh, cheated Jacob. Laban cheated Jacob. Every time he looked at Leah, what was it reminding him? Laban. And seven years that he had to toil to get. It's not that he was a wife beater. You know, we should not, the word does not intend to mean that way. But just looking at Leah, he kept away just like a thorn seed. Remember the word? The pictograph for that word is thorn seed. So he was avoiding Leah like a thorn seed. Okay. Keeping a distance from Leah because she reminded him of the unfairness of her father. Okay. But did God accept Jacob's way of treating her? No. He blessed her. She bore children first. Okay. Rachel did not. It was long after that that Rachel bore children. Okay. So the word hate, you know, in some of our versions may give us a wrong connotation again because it's the same word which is used here. So Malachi 
1, 2 to 3 and Romans 9, 13. Jacob, God loved and Esau, he hated. So we must understand that also in the context of the way the word, the original word Sani means. Okay. <coughs> What did Esau do? He rejected God's plans. Okay. Esau was firstborn. Okay. Esau was firstborn. In the Old Testament, what does the Bible tell about firstborns? Huh? They are consecrated for God. That was God's plan for the firstborn. Okay. That is why he punished Egypt when he gave the plague. He killed the firstborn. And he told all Israelites to devote their firstborn to him. Okay. God has a special plan for the firstborns. And Esau rejected that plan which God had. Okay. He despised it. That's the word that is used in the Bible. There were privileges that came. And along with the privileges came responsibilities. Esau did not want those responsibilities. Okay. He hurt God and broke his heart. Okay. Constantly. The words don't indicate God's fury without reason or cause. You know, many times we get the feeling that this word indicates that, you know, before Jacob or Esau was born, God started Hating Esau. It's not that way. It is not indicating hatred in that sense or fury or rejection of Esau from his saving grace. Okay. The words don't indicate God's fury without cause. Why we understand it that way? Because as humans, what happens? We tend to act in anger on people even without cause sometimes. Or with negligible cause also, we can tend to be furious about them. And then even little, little actions that the person does can promote us to, provoke us to show a fury towards them. Okay, but God is not like that. We will look at some more verses. Number 30, verse 4. We will read it now. Only one gentleman can take. Yeah. Hey, this gentleman, I did. Next <laughs> time you have to come this side. Huh? Yeah, read it. All those who are on my side, no, they are in the shadow. <laughs> Same. It's not there, number 30. And the father hears of our O and our and our. Flesh which by which she she has borne herself and saved nothing to us. Then all her hopes shall stand, and her flesh by which she has borne herself shall stand. Yes, I think I will put the wrong question. Yeah, I think I'll pick the wrong chapter. Okay, I think it might be. Yeah, I think the chapter is wrong. But uh, you can, uh, I'll try to correct it later on. Uh, maybe Amy, if you're listening, you can correct it for us. Last time she had been correcting one verse. Okay. God made sure, see, when the Israelites returned from Egypt, they... We have seen the Israel and there is Sinai at the uh, left side, you know. So they came down Sinai and then they were to enter through the kingdom of the Edomites. Okay. But before they went there, God told them no fighting with them, no killing them. Okay. But when they went, so Moses asked permission with the Edomite king to let them pass through. Okay, but the Edomite king, what was his response? He brought his army. Okay, he blocked the way and he said, nothing doing, you guys are not going to go through. 
So Moses and the Israelites, they went round about from the other side and entered into the promised land, circumventing the land of the Edomites. Okay. So it is very clear that God was not hating Esau, otherwise he would have hated his descendants as well. Okay. But God told the Israelites, they are your brothers, don't treat them badly. This action is consistent with God's character. Exodus 34, 6 to 7. Can someone read it from here? Armudan, you can read it. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, compassionate, the compassionate and the gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithful life, maintaining love of love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty and punish the children. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Okay. When is this incident taking place? <clears throat> Any idea? Aage piche dekho. Chapter 34. He hmm? went. Yeah. So this is what the Lord told Moses. Okay. Just before this, Moses in the previous incident now was put into a cleft where God passed in front of him. Okay. And it is the same Lord who is talking to him now and telling that he is compassionate and gracious. Slow to anger. He doesn't get provoked to anger like us. Okay. He does not get angry without cause, without reason. Okay. And he maintains his love to thousands. He maintains. He is the one who maintains, not we. Okay. He is the one who initiates and maintains it. And he forgives people. Okay. He is the God who forgives people. And uh, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. Okay. Sin will be punished. Okay. We saw the earlier passages. No? Sin must be punished. So who was punished? Jesus came in the way. He was punished instead of us. Okay. So this uh, declaration that God makes is consistent with, this interpretation is consistent with God's character as revealed in the Bible. Luke 6.27 but I say to you to hear love your enemies do good to those who hate you okay love your enemies do good to those who hate you okay even people who are you know, repulsive to you, who become thorn seeds to you, our Lord is telling, love them. Okay? Because He loved them. That is His nature. He died for them. He died as their substitute. Okay? So God does not, without reason, send people to hell. He is fair. He is just. He is loving. None of His actions can contradict His own nature. You know? Uh, which, uh, according to the Bible, is unchanging. You know, God never changes. We may change, but He never changes. Okay? Jesus wanted us to love even when we are feeling like avoiding a person. Okay? 
लूक सिक्सटीन नाइनटीन टू थर्टी वन वॉट इज देर यू गॉट दैट वर्क विच वर्क वैली इन बिटवीन वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू स्टडी दिस पैसेज ओके देर इज बोर्ड ऑफ देम हैव डाइड and they are in hades one half of hades is a place of torment the other half was a place of where people were being comforted this is before christ death on the cross okay the reality is that on both sides of this valley there were thieves there were murderers there were liars there were adulterers there were people who had Rebelled against God. Both sides may. You get what I'm saying? David was an adulterer. Every Bible character that you read in the Old Testament also, or and in the New Testament, has sin in his life. We are no better than the people on the other side of the valley. One side are people who are saved. Okay. by the grace of our lord jesus christ god's provision for salvation there is one side which has rejected and made themselves like a thorn seed you know and have avoided every approach that god made into their lives and rejected him okay so we will end with that okay uh those we are running out of time maybe uh linson can lead us in prayer and then we